Welcome back. This is Newslink. Now, Ridge Wave residents have been without water for a week now. This after a major pipe had burst. The reservoir has now been closed. So let's find out more about water infrastructure from Mike Mueller from the Water Institute of Southern Africa. Thank you so much for joining us, Prof, and good morning to you. I think the residents of Ridge Way, Mondio, Rodeport, parts of Renberg are looking for some answers and hoping you can just really explain to them what is really happening. Prolonged water outages, uh, water shortage, and now the word water shedding it seems to be part of the conversation is this where we are good morning to you and to your viewers yeah it's not surprising that people are talking about water shedding because obviously they look at what happens with electricity and they think oh my <laughs> dear we're going into the same thing with water and i mean the good news is that we are not having a water crisis at the level of the electricity crisis uh Water comes from uh, large systems, from rivers. Those rivers are still running. The dams are still full. The systems that bring the water from the dams are still working. Uh, so we, we have bulk water available. But once you start distributing that water, it becomes quite difficult and quite local in its problems. And unlike electricity, you know, when ESCOM switches us back on, we come on immediately. In the case of water, it can sometimes take hours, and if the water's been off for a long time, it can take days before the system gets back to its normal, the distribution system. So it's a bit more complicated in water than it is electricity. The good news is we're not facing a national water crisis a la ESCOM, but the bad news is because water is complicated, there are occasions, and Ridgeway is demonstrating that very clearly, where once the water has gone off, getting it back on again is a long and painful process. Mm. Uh, Prof, you're absolutely correct. I mean, there, there have been those comparisons. I think because as a country, there's so much trauma when one thinks of load shedding. If there's a cut off anywhere, you think, okay, it's water shedding. If it's food, it's food shedding. Anything with the word shedding, you probably are prone to think that way, right? But also, I have to admit, it's also brought in the question around water infrastructure maintenance. Now, is there anything for South Africans to worry about with that regard? Yes, I think there is a great deal to worry about. And, you know, since uh, Ridgeway is in Johannesburg and Johannesburg just passed its budget yesterday, I think we get a very good picture from there immediately that there are problems, that uh, there's a lot of expenditure that's needed in water, but it's not clear that the money is being allocated to it. So, you know, we, we, we need to think about, firstly, infrastructure does get old, but if you look after it carefully, it can last a long time. I mean, I'm in the business of water and pipe, um, pipe networks can last for 50 or 60 years in many places. It can last even longer than that. Uh, if you look after them, and that means looking after the roads around them as well as the pipes underneath. Mm. But um, you also need to have a regular program and, and see which, which pipes are beginning to deteriorate and replace them before they start breaking regularly. And we know that because of uh, funding shortages and also poor planning in many cases, the city of Joburg isn't uh, systematically replacing what it needs to replace at the right time. So we have to ask, why is there a funding shortage? Mm. And yesterday's budget, I think we ought to have a look at because I just had a quick look. You know, it's, it's 280 pages, so we can't go into detail about it. But Johannesburg Water... Uh, gets uh, 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 about 13, 14 billion rand, but they contribute about 16 billion rand. And when you look at what the water, what the money is spent on that they get, a whole lot of it, about 3 billion, goes to um, paying back the city for bills which aren't collected. And we have this rather strange situation where Joburg Water is responsible for running the water system, but the city... Uh, gets the money and then decides how much Joburg Water should have of that money that they collect. And quite clearly, Joburg Water isn't getting enough money to do its job properly. Yeah, it's some of the problems and concerns that were raised as well, Prof, by uh, some of the residents, even in Ridgeway, saying this, there isn't enough transparency as to where this uh, you know, funding is going, where the resources are going. Uh, it seems there's no light uh, in terms of getting those answers. But also, it's easy for us to say, listen, we want water and we want it immediately. But the question is, are we assured that uh, the water is in good qualities of drinking water uh, standards, but also these water processes are being treated, especially if we are 
to use Haman Skral um, as an example. And that's the question because it seems, according to this interim report, known as the Blue Drop Watch Report, its focus, Prof, is on that, the condition of drinking water infrastructure, treatment processes, as well as the water quality. So are we receiving quality water? Well, you know, we started by talking about Ridgeway and we're talking mm -hmm. about Johannesburg. And I would say that Johannesburg, which is served by Randwater, uh, as is Ekuruleni and parts of Chwani and, and other areas of Gauteng and actually outside, we're lucky. We have Randwater, which is actually quite a competent organization and produces large amounts of pure, reliable water. So in the areas supplied by Randwater, I'm relatively comfortable that our water is safe. The rest of the country is a very different picture. And we always need to remember that water is not like electricity, uh, where you've got a single provider in ESCOM. Water is provided by all sorts of small municipalities, uh, other water boards, different agencies. And each one of those can do a good job. Unfortunately, quite often they do a bad job. But in Johannesburg, our water is safe. I think what we need to worry about, and I think you've highlighted it, is the information. So the people in Ridgeway and South Joburg generally weren't being told this is a problem at Randwater. Because the power has been cut, there's no water coming into South Joburg. Because of that, the reservoirs have run dry. Once those reservoirs have run dry, it's going to take two days to fill them. So please prepare yourself for three or four days without water. Now, that, that story could have been told. But between the Randwater people the Joburg water people, the city of Johannesburg people, there does seem to be a complete failure to coordinate and tell the, the residents what's happening. And that's really not good enough. Um, so I think that th those three organizations, and they are separate, should get together and start communicating properly to tell people what's happening and what yeah. they can expect. Uh, it's the least that they can do. I couldn't agree more with you, Prof, because just hearing from the inconvenience experienced by the residents, they could have used just heads up, uh, you know, that there will be prolonged water shortages. So in my last question to you, what are some of the other urgent interventions you would recommend, Prof, not only uh, when it comes to obviously addressing uh, critical water issues, but also rebuilding trust within the water industry? Oh, you know, I, I, I do think that we have challenges and I'd like to uh, think that we will get a uh, situation where we can give the responsibility of uh, re linking with the public, talking to the public, to Joburg Water, allow them to collect the funds, to collect the tariffs, to tell us what they're doing with them and then tell us when there are problems. Then we can get away from this situation where Randwater blames City of uh, blames Joburg Water, J Joburg Water blames the municipality, and we don't actually get a clear message. So let's actually ask the city and Randwater to coordinate and give Joburg Water, uh, at least in this city, the responsibility for talking to people and running the business and explaining what they're doing. That would be a good start. Then we have to do that in another 150 municipalities across the country. But, uh, you know, we, we, can, we can sort that out. So let's start in Johannesburg and make it work. All right, well, I appreciate you speaking to me. Prof. Mark Mueller, thank you so much uh, for your time and joining us right here on Newslink. That's the uh, Water Institute of Southern Africa's Mark Mueller talking more about uh, the water issues experienced currently in Ridgeway. Prolonged water outages have been seen in parts of Ridgeway, Mondio, Rodeport, uh, as well as other parts of Randburg reporting the same issues. But residents saying they could have used some information. It seems there isn't enough transparency between Joburg Water and uh, the award councillor. And as uh, Mark Mueller could have said uh, a little piece of information could have went a long way in terms of planning while they're of course addressing some of those uh, issues in the background.